Well, hello, class. It's Philip Seagraves. Hope you guys are doing well. We're going to be going through a couple of the things that we talked about in class, just the beginnings of simulation. And I'm going to cover a few things that we had questions about today as well, just a few small tips and tricks with Excel. And then we will get you guys ready to, to move from these just real basic simulation with something like dice, a couple of dice and we'll start modeling some real business scenarios. Okay, here we go. All right, if you remember our first example, we have a sheet that has several columns that are making up the formula for doing a random roll of a six-sided die. I have one question in class today, which was how I would get this sentence up here to include the value six so that when I changed it here to something like a 9, it changes in my sentence. So I'll just show you that real quick. Really not having much to do with simulation, but just a, a nice thing that you'll be able to do. If you notice up here in the formula bar, I have an equals, and then I have a, a quotation, and I have the beginning of my sentence, and I have a space in there after the with. And then I'm going to include a reference to a cell in there, which is B3 right here. But in order to do that, I use the AND, the ampersand symbol, B3, ampersand again, and then I start the quotes again because I'm going to have some more text. But I put a space in there, so I've got a space before the 9 and after the 9. And then I just close it out again with quotation marks. So if I were to edit this text here, I could change that period to an exclamation point hit enter and you'll notice that my formula has changed now and I have an exclamation point in there and so anytime I were to change this we'll put it back to six it's going to change my sentence there all right so if we go down here if you remember I have a random number generator right here I it shows certainly a lot more digits than that but I'm only showing the first few and there's a little tool up here in the Excel uh, toolbar which I have hidden conveniently right now but if you click that little double arrow there it brings up other menus and these two choices here decrease decimal or increase decimal if you use whatever ones you've used recently will show up on the bar here so if I want to increase the decimals now you notice it put it on my toolbar here now and every time I highlight these guys it's going to let me increase those decimals and we'll get that decrease decimal tool back over there because I don't need that many. We'll decrease them back to where they were. All right. So that's just a real quick thing. And you notice here I've got these formulas written up here. And the reason these formulas aren't working is because I put a an apostrophe in there before it. And that apostrophe just lets it know to ignore this as a formula. So if you see I have an apostrophe in there. I'll double click it so it's a little bigger. I've got an apostrophe in there before that equals. So if you just want to show the formula exactly the way it would look inside the cell, just put an apostrophe in there and then it won't calculate the cell. If you see in there, I've got the same formula here, equals, rand, open, close parentheses, but without the apostrophe, it goes ahead and calculates it. I've done the same thing here, here, and here so that you can see the formulas without having to have them calculate. All right, so now what we've done is we've taken our random number generator, I've multiplied it by our six to get our six-sided die. The problem is that's going to give me a distribution which runs between zero and six. So that's not going to do me a lot of good because a, a six-sided die can't take on the values of zero to six. First I'm going to do is strip off these decimals using the integer, integer formula or the integer, um, yeah, integer function in Excel. And we can see how that's done. I've just taken the integer and, multi and used it as a parameter. I've used the value from over here. And then what I've had to do, because this is going to take on values anywhere between 0 and 5 in this case, because now I've stripped off, since I've stripped off what could have come after the 5, which could have taken me up to 5.9999999 repeating, I've stripped that off, so now our possible values are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And on a six-sided die, that's not going to work so great, so we're going to add 1 
to our value. So now we have our six-sided die, which is going to show us in this column right here. So you can see we have all these values, and they look like they're right. It's going to be one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then I did the same thing over here. I just included all those pieces in one formula, and I used the dollar symbols here so I could drag it down. So if you see, what I have is I have the uh, the innermost pieces of our parentheses is what it's going to do first, the random number generator, 0 through 1 times our value, which was our 6. It's going to give us a number between 0 and 5.9999999. And then we're going to take an integer of that and strip off the extra, so it's going to give us a value now of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. And then we're going to add a 1 to it, and that's going to give us our random numbers. All right, and you can see I've just copied that down. And if we have two dice, it's a real simple operation here. We're just going to add these two numbers together. The 4 plus the 5 is going to give us what? It's going to give us a 9. Unfortunately, you're not going to see the 9 because when I hit Escape, it's going to recalculate all those values. Oh, no, it didn't. Well, I was wrong. That's the first time so far in this, unless you guys tell me I've made other mistakes, which is... Oh, it did recalculate. It just hadn't done it yet. Aha, I was right. Yes. Okay, now if I hit...